Welcome to Reagan and Friends, a podcast series hosted by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. Each month, we will share some behind the scenes moments and stories of President Reagan with some of his more famous friends. He said that since it was March 17th, it was only fitting that someone dropped by who actually had known St. Patrick. <laughs> And that's true, Tip. I did know St. Patrick. In fact, we both changed to the same political party at about the same time. (laughs) Now, it's true that Tip and I have had our political disagreements. Sure, I said some things about Tip, and Tip said some things about me, but that's all history. And anyway, you know how it is, I forget. I just follow that old motto, forgive and forget, or is it forget and forgive? (laughs) Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I think you know Tip and I have been kidding each other for some time now, and I hope you also know how much I hope this continues for many years to come. A little kidding is, after all, a sign of affection, the sort of things that friends do to each other. And Mr. Speaker, I'm grateful you have permitted me in the past, and I hope in the future, that singular honor, the honor of calling you my friend. Thomas Philip O'Neill Jr., known as Tip, was born on December 9, 1912. He was the third of three children born to Thomas Philip O'Neill and Rose Ann O'Neill in the Irish middle-class area of North Cambridge, Massachusetts, known at the time as Old Dublin. His mother died when he was only nine years old, and he was raised largely by a French-Canadian housekeeper until his father remarried when he was eight. How did he get his nickname? It was picked up during his childhood after the Canadian baseball player James Tip O'Neill. Tip O'Neill was educated in Roman Catholic schools, graduating in 1931 from high school, where he was captain of the basketball team. In 1936, he graduated from Boston College. Tip O'Neill first became active in politics at 15, campaigning for Al Smith in his 1928 presidential campaign. Four years later, he helped campaign for Franklin Roosevelt. As a senior at Boston College, O'Neill ran for a seat on the Cambridge City Council but lost, his first race and only electoral defeat. The campaign taught him the lesson that became his best known quote, all politics is local. After graduating in 1936, O'Neill was elected at the age of 24 to the Massachusetts House of Representatives. And in 1949, he became the first Democratic Speaker of the Massachusetts House of Representatives in its history. He remained in that post until 1952, when he ran for the United States House of Representatives from his home district and was elected to the congressional seat vacated by Senator-elect John F. Kennedy. He would be re-elected 16 more times. In 1971, O'Neill was appointed Majority Whip in the House, the number three position for the Democratic Party in the House. Two years later, in 1973, he was elected House Majority Leader and, in 1977, elected Speaker of the House. So, how did this fiercely liberal Democrat, one who once called Ronald Reagan the most ignorant man in the White House, become a friend of the 40th president? Well, in his autobiography in American Life, Ronald Reagan wrote, A few days after the 1981 inauguration, I invited Tip O'Neill, the Speaker of the House, over to see me in the White House. He was full of Irish warmth, a great storyteller, and I liked him. After writing about disagreeing with each other almost immediately, President Reagan continued in his autobiography, We agreed that since we were going to have to do business with each other, we should try our best to get along. President Reagan shared another story in his autobiography about their friendship. He wrote, A month or so after the inauguration, we invited Tip O'Neill and his wife and a few other guests to have dinner with us in the family quarters. Nancy had already made a lot of progress in her efforts to renovate the second and third floors, and Tip said, You know, I've been in and out of this place for 27 years, and I have never seen it look as beautiful as this. It was a warm, pleasant evening, and a good time was had by all. When it was over, I was certain Tip and I had worn out Nancy and the other guests by trying to top each other with Irish stories passed on by our fathers. I also thought I'd made a friend. 
But a day or two later, I picked up a newspaper and read a story in which Tip really lit into me personally because he didn't like the economic recovery program and some of the cuts I proposed in spending. Some of his remarks were pretty nasty. I was not only surprised, but disappointed and also a little hurt. I called him and said, Tip, I just read in the paper what you said about me yesterday. I thought we had a pretty fine relationship going. Old buddy Tip said, that's politics. After six o'clock, we can be friends, but before six, it's politics. But they did truly become friends. In February of 1981, in honor of President Reagan's 70th birthday, Tip O'Neill gifted President Reagan this American flag, which flew over the U.S. Capitol on Ronald Reagan's inauguration day. Following President Reagan's assassination attempt in March of 1981, the president's then chief of staff, James Baker, made certain that Tip O'Neill was the very first politician to be granted access to Reagan's bedside as soon as Ronald Reagan's family had left the hospital room. Tip O'Neill entered the room, knelt at the president's bedside, and together they recited the 23rd Psalm. Then Tip O'Neill kissed the president on the forehead before leaving the hospital room. Later that year, in August, Tip O'Neill gifted President Reagan this wood gavel, which was used during the Tax Incentive Act. It has the lettering, I wish you well on it. When President Reagan was re-elected, just as he had done in 1981, Tip O'Neill gifted the president an American flag which had flown over the U.S. Capitol on Inauguration Day. Once, when asked by a group of school children whether he liked being president, Ronald Reagan replied, There were many moments of great joy, and I enjoyed the job very much. I even enjoyed the give and take of battling Congress, including Tip O'Neill. Over the years, President Reagan even sent birthday greetings to his friend. On March 17, 1986, Tip O'Neill said, The President and I oftentimes don't see eye to eye. We have our uh, little squabbles. But when he calls me at night, he says, is it six o'clock? Can we talk to friendly? Sure, absolutely. So we stop. We swap an Irish story or two. Mr. President, you know, we have different in philosophy. But I want to tell you how much I admire your ability, your talent, the way you handle the American people, the love that the American people have for you, and your leadership, even though I have opposed it. In 1991, O'Neill received the Freedom Medal by President George H.W. Bush, who called him a true patriot. Speaker O'Neill died from cardiac arrest in Boston on January 5, 1994, at the age of 81. But in addition to celebrating a, a country and a personal friendship, I wanted to come here tonight to join you in saluting Tip O'Neill, to salute him for the years of dedication and devotion to country. Tip's recollections of politics go back, of course, far beyond my own. He's, uh, he's seen some who play the game well and others who do not. He's seen some who love politics and some who came to it only out of a sense of duty. But through it all, Tip has been a vital and forceful part of America's political tradition, a tradition that he has truly enriched. Tip. You are a true son of Boston College and our friend. And we salute you. You are also a leader of the nation. And for that, we honor you. But you also embody so much of what this nation is all about the hope that is America. So you make us proud as well, my friend. You make us proud. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified every time new videos and podcasts are added to our site, including our Reagan and Friends, Words to Live By, and Reagan Forum podcasts. And don't forget to follow at Ronald Reagan on Facebook and Twitter, as well as at Reagan Foundation on Instagram and YouTube.